Welcome to the Holistic Success Show. I'm Elizabeth Lozano. And I'm Dr. Robert Puff. Today we're going to have an expert on natural beauty. Dr. Puff is going to be talking to us about the importance of silence as well as how we can learn from everyone in our life. And a question from you about how to set healthy boundaries. Our other question is about meditation. Thank you so much for joining us and we hope you enjoy the show. I'd like to discuss with you my favorite topic probably in the whole universe, and that topic is silence. You may be looking at me asconce, what are you talking about, Dr. Buff? How can silence be a topic? Well, you actually get to participate in it every day of your life. When you go to sleep at night and your mind passes the state of dreams and you go in the deep, deep sleep where you have a quiet time, you every day have that experience. What if you could take that same experience and have it throughout the day, where your mind, this mind of yours, instead of constantly engaging, talking, evaluating good, bad with the world, just were still. Meditation, I think, is a more natural form that people realize that you can enter the world of silence. Because I believe at its core, what meditation is, there are so many different forms of meditation, but at its core, meditation is silence. But what happens is, in that silence, there is a richness, there's a peace, there's a bliss that truly passes all understanding. Because when you don't have the understanding, you enter this world of bliss, of peace, of beyond words. It's just beautiful. And the wonderful thing about what I'm presenting to you is you can actually try it out. When you do meditation, instead of having a mantra or you know, going along to a guided meditation, sometimes just be still. Quiet your mind with no thoughts, future past, fears, desires, just be present, be here, be now, be still, be. And what you'll find in that pure beingness is truly what I described before, bliss and happiness. It's actually, I believe, our natural state. Silence, when we're silent, it's our natural state. It's like your room that you're in, you say, if you take out the furniture, if you take out the walls, if you take out the um, lights, what do you have left? You have the space. And silence is like that. Silence is that which is between our thoughts. And if you can start entering the world of silence, what you may find is truly a remarkable world you can enter yourself into, a world that can just change the very fabric of your being. And a way, the way to do that is, if I can give you a challenge, and perhaps you can try this, is not only when you meditate, but just when you're going through your day, sometimes just sit and be still. Be 100% present with what is, with no thoughts of analyzing or critiquing, just be. And perhaps what you'll find, I'd love to hear from you, perhaps what you'll find is that true peace that passes all understanding. Our first question this week comes to us from Michelle in Memphis, Tennessee. I sometimes have a hard time setting boundaries with people because I don't want to hurt or upset them. What can I do to overcome this? Michelle, first I want to start with what boundaries are. Boundaries are drawing a line in the sand and saying, please don't cross this line. Now in relationships, sometimes people cross a line. But the first thing you want to do, Michelle, is making sure they know that that line exists. They may not know that that hurt your feelings, that that's offensive to you. So you tell them, you talk about that line, and you agree, oh, that makes sense to me, that line's clear, I get it. And so they stop crossing it. They may mess up once in a while, you just remind them because you love them that please don't cross that again. However, sometimes you're going to have people in your life that keep crossing that line. Then you have to do something even harder. You need to tell them, if you continue to cross this line, I won't hang out with you as much anymore. And that's going to be hard for you, Michelle, because you're a sensitive person. But if they continue to cross that line, the hardest part's going to be, but it's healthy, is saying, I love you, I care for you, 
but I'm not gonna hang out with you anymore because you keep crossing this line. So boundaries are there to keep relationships healthy, to keep them functional and make them work well. So establish a boundary, stick to it, and realize it is a way to establish a loving relationship with other people. Michelle, this one was a really hard one for me in my life, and I would be lying if I said that there are times that it isn't still difficult, but it is something that has helped me heal tremendously in my life. And one thing that I've found is that it's so important to tell the people that you love when they've crossed that boundary, and actually your relationship can grow from there. I remember a time I had an interaction with my stepdad, and I was really upset and really angry with him, and I <laughs> had to take some deep breaths, play some calming music, and I called him and I said, look, I know you were really upset with me and it's okay for you to be angry, but it's never okay for you to speak to me that way. And while I was trembling and so scared, his response was just apology and he was really respectful of me and we actually have a better relationship because of it. And I think it's so important because of that, you can actually build your relationship and prove those things. And the truth is, is that somebody is loving you and respecting you, they will respect those boundaries. And if they're not, then you really need to reconsider that relationship relationship. I know it's really hard, especially when you're sensitive and you have a big heart, but it is so important for you to set those boundaries. Even if maybe it takes a day and you have to take a deep breath, light some candles and play some soft music to, to get yourself ready for it. Well, I know Elizabeth and you're in my working relationship too. You know, sometimes we have things to work through and I actually appreciate it when you tell me things that, you know, that I need to change or behavior that I need to modify because it offends you. I mean, I think and, it's great. And vice versa. Yeah, and yeah. it is hard, you know, sure. when you're working with somebody and you're spending time and you care about somebody, it's very hard, but right. it's important because otherwise, if you're not growing and you're going to just fall and you're going to grow apart and that's not a good thing. Well, and like with your, with your stepfather too, it's like he responded so beautifully back and think how much you may have helped him in that process. So it's I think setting boundaries can really be a, I'm, I'm glad when people set boundaries with me. I mean, like, like I don't want to hurt people when they tell me that I'm very thankful. I think so too. Well, thank you so much for your question and we wish you all the best in setting those boundaries. Tranquility and peace. Find freedom and relaxation no matter where you are or who you're with. Be still, be free. Meditation for Health and Happiness, available at www.holistichealth.tv. Our guest this week is Louisa McCann Graves, and she's the author of Hollywood Beauty Secrets, Remedies to the Rescue, which offers budget-friendly, age-proving tips so that we can all look and feel our best on any budget. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So I understand that you're a body parts model in Hollywood. Can you talk to me about how this kind of connects with you writing the book? Yes, of course. Um, I'm actually still a body parts model, which is very shocking in youth-oriented Hollywood. But my book and what I write about is, is proof that what I'm talking about works. No matter what size you are, your height or your weight, you can look and feel your best. I mean, I double four models which tells you that even models aren't perfect looking, right? <laughs> yes, it does. And I'm not perfect looking. I just know how to work with the things I have to make them look their best and make myself feel my best. And so I wrote the book because I really want women to know that there is hope and that they can look good with affordable, non-invasive things that I address in the book. Everything from head to toe, whether you have thinning, falling hair, you have cellulite or weight, weight you want to lose, uh, dark circles, puffy eyes, chapped lips. We address it all in the book and it's all doable. So every woman in America will get the results. Can you talk to us about how you got started in this and what led you to it? Sure. Well, I began as a model in Toronto and um, a photographer noticed my long fingers and nice nail beds. And I started doing Avon and uh, different types of body parts modeling with the hands, my ears, bra packages and bathing suits and um, just became a bar body parts model. Well, you you do money. have beautiful hands, by the way, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I found I created this niche because I, I found that I made more money using my parts individually than I did as a whole. <laughs> it's kind of so, funny. Nobody would really think that, huh? Right, yes. And so um, I uh, came to Hollywood to pursue an acting career, and a person down the street said, oh, we need a hand model for a commercial. So uh, Hollywood just found out, word of mouth, it's a very small industry here, and I just started doing hands and parts for celebrities, and I've done many, many 
hands of parts. So, and I would imagine that you have to keep those parts nice and looking really good. Is that how you kind of got into creating the book? That's correct. I figured, you know, in the youth-oriented world of Hollywood, I was never going to last this long as a celebrity body part small. So I thought, I'm going to write a book about what I know best. And so I decided to write the book, Hollywood Beauty Secrets, Remedies to the Rescue, to reveal that you can do non-invasive, affordable things to look and feel your best. So your skin is so beautiful and your hands are so beautiful. So how, what can somebody do to keep their hands looking nice and young or their face as well? What are some things they can use? Well, there are several things and they're very easy to find at a regular health food store. You can make them at home yourself. And that's what my book is all about. Uh, first of all, I do recommend you stay out of the sun because it damages the skin. You want to wear sunscreen every day, a 30 SPF if you live in a sunny climate or and this 15 probably SPF. starts at a young age too, right? Because I mean, we see these teenagers and they're out in the sun. Okay, I did it too, but mm -hmm. I see that and they're coming in. I'm like, what are you doing? And are sitting in the tanning beds. Can't be good for you. It's very bad. It causes over 75% of the wrinkles on your face. So just, and it takes 60 seconds of um, exposure to the sun for the damage to start. It's that it's that strong, so you have to wear your sunscreen. Exfoliating is great. You can do it with baking soda or you can buy scrubs at the health food store. Exfoliating stimulates collagen in the skin. It helps plump the skin. It, it uh, is great for getting rid of the little spots on your skin and uneven skin tone. Another thing I highly recommend is applying antioxidants on the skin because they nourish the skin and they protect the skin. Are there like lotions or topical agents that are out there that we could do that? I mean, does it come in some form that you... Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. There are many at the health food store. Look for the ingredients that say things like DMAE, which is a skin firming ingredient. Look for vitamin E, vitamin C, green tea, white tea. Those they actually have those inside those products. That's amazing. Yes, there are many, many of them, and I list them in the book. And um, so there's a lot to choose from. So no matter what budget you have, you can find these things to help improve your skin. I also recommend every day, if you wear your antioxidant during the day, I highly recommend applying peptides during the night because they are clinically documented to be more effective and more affordable than Retin-A. So uh, you just apply them, they help brighten the skin and they stimulate collagen over 360% and hyaluronic acid over 267%, which is anti-aging. The beauty of peptides too is everyone can use them, they're affordable, and if you're pregnant you can use them, unlike Retin-A. Uh, oh. Retin and any age can use them, but it's a great preventative. Now, are they? do they have some hidden names as well? Because I know with the amino acids, you mentioned a whole list of other things, but will yes. it say peptides on it, or does it say something else? Well, peptides come in different names, different names there are oleopeptides, pentapeptide 3 and 6, matrixyl is a brand name. So you would look for those ingredients and I do mention more of that in the book to explain that to people so they can understand what to target. What now to what for. about vitamins or things that we put inside of our body because obviously the things that we eat and the vitamins that we take affect us as well. Is there any like supplements that we can take to help with our skin? Absolutely. Well, I think a multivitamin is great, especially if you're not eating your five servings of vegetables and fruit a day. But great supplements that you can add to that are number one, essential fatty acids. One of the things I find when women call me and they say, I'm feeling really old, I have no energy, my skin looks terrible, the first thing I ask them is, are you taking essential fatty acids? And they usually say no. And so that's one thing that you want to start taking, essential fatty acids. I mean, do check with your doctor if you have any concerns taking supplements. But essential fatty acids are in your fish oil, your flaxseed oil, they're your omega-3s and 6s. They do so many tremendous things to help not only your skin look wonderful, but your entire being feel yeah, wonderful. They actually help prevent you from getting sick too and give you a lot of energy and they help brain functioning and everything as well. It's amazing. As well as great for the skin, great for your joints, uh, prevent heart disease, mm -hmm. great for uh, reducing high blood pressure. They balance your hormones. If you have PMS or you're going through hormonal balance imbalances, they balance the hormones. Um, so many great things. Essential fatty acids are a must. Another great thing I think women should take is chlorella. Many of us are dealing with, you know, constipation. Our, our systems are sluggish. Chlorella... And that's not good for your skin either, is no, it? No. <laughs> it, so chlorella is a toxin fighter. It's an immune booster. So it'll clear up if you're getting acne because your body has toxins. It, or if you have hormonal balances and you get the acne. It'll help your skin and your hair look beautiful. Great for the joints. Great for uplifting the mood. 
and hormone balancing. So that's another great one. And the last one is hyaluronic acid. When you get older, you stop producing it, your joints get sore. So you wanna take that. In fact, you know when you're about 40, well, you're probably not 40. When you hit about 40, you usually need to wear glasses, right? That's because your eyes are made up of a lot of hyaluronic acid. Uh -huh. So you wanna take the hyaluronic acid supplements to help prevent your eyes from deteriorating and keep your joints nice and limber. Great advice. Now, if people would like to get a hold of you or get a hold of this book, how can they do that? Well, they can just visit my website. It's hollywoodbeautysecrets.com where you can get the book for actually 40% off. You can sign up for my free newsletter for all sorts of free information, as well as you will find many of the products listed in the book available there at deep discount prices because that's what it's all about, keeping it budget friendly, keeping it available to all the women out there so we can all look and feel our best. And we so appreciate that as well as you being a guest on our show. Thank you. Thank you. In life, we have things that irritate us, that make us upset, that get us angry. But what if, instead of staying stuck with that, what if instead of struggling with that, you could actually see that as your teacher, something you actually need to learn about yourself? And I think a story could help illustrate that best. My wife, who I love very deeply, when I first met her, we had a difference. The difference was I'm very prompt, I'm very much on time, and she wasn't. She had a different time frame than I did. And uh, at first, it was even we had a lot in common, of course, where we married each other. But it was a part of us that were different, and it did cause me to make me, you know, upset. It make me, you know, sometimes angry and just irritated with what she did. So what I did is, you know, because I loved her, I wanted to work on that. I saw, so I thought, what is it in me that is making me upset by this? I mean, not what is she doing wrong, because she's upset and me being on time was the right thing. I actually looked at me. And what I found was I was really pushing myself far too hard in my life. And I saw how in her, she was more enjoying the journey and enjoying life. So my upsetness at her was a lesson about me. And when I got that, when I really got that message, it just transformed my life. So if there are people that you love or people that you struggle with that are upsetting you, what I would encourage you to do, of course you need to set boundaries if they're hurting you, if there are things you need to talk with them about. But if something that just persists and keeps going on and on and on, another way to look at it is, this is my lesson, this is my teacher, something that I can learn from to improve my life. And I think having that attitude will just open up a beautiful world to you where instead of struggling and getting stuck on things and really feeling like life is just constant misery and constant struggle and you just have so many problems going on. Instead you could say, hmm, you know, I'm upset. Not everyone is upset by this, but I'm upset by this. What is this teaching me about me? And taking that approach you might find is quite magical because what it can do is actually soften your heart and help you to learn things about yourself. And if you can change yourself, which you have far more control over than changing others, if you can change yourself and learn from other people, particularly when they cause you suffering, the beautiful thing is the solution to your suffering comes from you. And you don't need that other person to fix the situation. You can. So think, perhaps, just think about maybe applying this some part of your life. Try it out and let me know how it goes. I'd love to hear from you. Peace. Our second question is from Nikisa in Iran. I have started to meditate but have had a hard time keeping my mind quiet. What can I do to improve my experience meditating? Nikisa, the first thing I've learned that really helped me when I was beginning to meditate was gentleness. When you start off, it's very challenging to quiet the mind. Meditation is an absolutely beautiful experience, but at first, like anything you try new, it is difficult, 
But if you use gentleness and kindness with, toward yourself when you're meditating, I think you'll find it will go much more easily and it will go better. So when you sit down, you quiet your mind, you close your eyes. When your mind starts wandering, just go back to why well, I like to do your breath. Go back to your breath or your mantra or your prayer word, whatever you're using to meditate. And when your mind wanders again, just go back to, let's use the example of your breath, go back to your breath. And your mind wanders again, go back to your breath. The key is though, each time your mind wanders, be gentle with yourself and go back to your breath. And what you'll find is that gentleness, that kindness will really help you to fine tune and perfect your meditation skills. Meditation, like anything, is something new you're learning. And if you use kindness and gentleness to learn that skill, it will go much better. I relate to your question greatly, Nikisa, because I myself struggle with this. And while Dr. Puff has had 30 years experience with meditation and has taught me so much in the last, I don't know, we've known each other for a good 10 years, but I, in the last four years I've learned a lot about meditation and have really incorporated it into my life and has made such a difference. And I think pushing past those moments when you're ping-ponging all over in your head, especially when you're stressed out, but I think what he said is so important. It's even if you have 30 seconds of a clear mind or if you have a minute of a clear mind, that makes a difference. And you'll notice that the more you start to do it, the more you will experience during the day moments of stillness and quietness, whether it's you walking and being quiet and noticing the flowers or the sky or just maybe birds chirping. It's amazing how much more I notice that ever since I've been able to quiet my mind. Maybe it's not quiet 100% of the time, I guarantee you it's not, but at least if I make effort to do that, it definitely makes a difference. And it also helps in my confidence, both in myself and that everything's gonna work out and be okay no matter what happens. You know, and Elizabeth, there are many aspects of meditation. Can you think of something they could do to learn more about it? Our Meditation for Health podcast, which is available both on iTunes and our website for free and it's there to help you with all those things. And in it, what do we do? We offer one, one, sometimes we talk about studies and all the benefits of meditation. Sometimes we talk about the different aspects of meditation and sometimes... We give you guided meditations which will help you because hearing our voice and breathing will actually help you to quiet that mind. So thank you very much for your question and we wish you all the best on your journey of meditation. How to Live a Positive Life, available at www.holistichealth.tv. Our quote this week is by Voltaire, shun idleness, it is the rest that attaches itself to the most brilliant metals. You have the ability to shine, you just need to believe in yourself and put forth effort. Thank you for joining us on the Holistic Success Show. If you'd like to be kept up to date as to all the things that we're doing, please subscribe to our newsletter on our website and we'll also send you a free ebook. And if you have a company would like to learn about sponsorship opportunities, please visit our website. Thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next week.